the cornfields of Indiana. Welcome to the GCN Show. Hello and welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, should cyclists have insurance and registration? No one hears why. Yes, do we need insurance though? That is another question entirely. Now, we're also talking about the new steering function on Zwift, the fact that Canada has become the latest country to back cycling in a big way. Plus, we've got results from our Kamut competition where one of you has won a 3T Explorer. This week in the world of cycling, we learned once again that pro racing is a brutal sport. The crash in the final sprint of stage one of the Tour of Poland last week was truly horrifying. Fabio Jakobsen of the Koenig Quickstep was seriously injured, although six days on, the prognosis is looking a little better than it did. Still, it's gonna be a long road to recovery, so all of us here at GCN wish Fabio the absolute best. Questions are rightly being asked whether crashes like this one could and should be prevented. More on that on the GCN Racing News Show and on the world of cycling on the app. Indeed. Now, we also learned this week that we could all have made a tidy profit out of bikes this year if only we'd invested in stocks and shares. If you check out this graph from the Financial Times, you'll see that the world's three biggest bike brands, Shimano, Giant and Merida, have all seen a huge uplift in share prices, up by between 100 and 200% since March. However, much like our race prediction, our stocks and shares advice is to be similarly doomed. But Dan Lloyd is having an uncharacteristically good run at race predictions at the moment. He is. I wonder whether it's maturity, Manon. Oh, yeah. um, today is, after all, his 40th birthday. Happy birthday to you. I was a bit worried it, it wouldn't fit still, but fine. Perfect training, the perfect taper, and now the perfect time for loiding. Now in the UK last week, there was a debate whether cyclists should have a visible identification number and insurance, and that debate kicked off last week. It did. So a controversial lawyer, whose nickname is Mr Loophole, because he exploits loopholes in the law to get wealthy clients off driving offences, has rather ironically called for cyclists to face tighter regulation to rid the country of what he calls toxic cycling culture. Maybe uh, he's after some new clients? Well, yeah. <laughs> One of his suggestions was for cyclists to wear a uniquely identifying vest with a number on, basically a number plate, but on a vest, uh, for compulsory insurance purposes. Yeah. Now, I'm not suggesting for one minute that cyclists should be above the law, but I also don't think for one minute that cyclists are currently above the law. Certainly there have been a couple of high profile cases recently where a cyclist has either gone to prison or faced a suspended sentence having tragically hit and then killed a pedestrian. It is worth noting that the incidence between pedestrians and bikes is really low. Here in the UK, there were four fatalities last year, four too many. But if you compare that to the 450 pedestrians that were hit by cars, now again, a horrifying statistic, but hopefully it puts into perspective the disparity between the risks posed by bikes and posed by cars, and therefore why people on bikes shouldn't be treated in the same way as cars. Well, yes, because there is costs associated with regulating cycling, lots of costs, in fact, economically for one. Yeah, so it would be super expensive to implement, and as we've seen, for what gain? Plus, you would then have to police it. And given that 15% of drivers are already uninsured, it would seem like an impossible task. The other cost is to people's health and well-being. We need as many people on bikes right now, yes, for COVID-19 related reasons, but also for the obesity epidemic many countries are facing. Yes, plus we need lower emissions as well because toxic pollution is also a cause of many thousands of premature deaths every year. And so to put such a big hurdle in front of cycling would make it insurmountable to many people. Also, what age do you start requiring insurance? What about a six-year-old riding to school? Yeah, exactly. So as you can tell, we are pretty opposed to this. But there is also another question here that as people who cycle for leisure, would it be a good idea to have insurance? 
We turn to the brilliant BicycleLaw.com website that is run by former Olympian, pro cyclist turned lawyer. Yeah, so it's a complicated topic, not least because it's going to vary from country to country. In the US, for example, if you have health insurance, that's likely to cover your own health-related costs. Plus, there is additional protection that you can get on your motor policy, if you have one. Whereas here in the UK, membership of Cycling UK or British Cycling will give you third-party liability insurance. And that's probably not a bad idea. It's also worth checking your home insurance policy as well, because you can often get a third-party insurance and liability. It's just worth checking the fine print. Yeah. Now, if this subject is of interest, then do make sure you let us know in the comments, because we could do a whole video on this, such as the complexity and also probably the importance. But otherwise, do make sure you get involved in the comments and let us know first what you think of this whole bike registration topic. And also, what do you say to people that come at you with such frankly ridiculous statements? Right, after a fairly heavy lead story here on the GCN Show, it's time for some inspiration. So we, as always, pick out our three favorite photos that you have uploaded to the GCN app and the top three win prizes. In third place this week, winning a pair of GCN Strive socks in black and green, we have this photo sent in by Mel B, which just makes me giggle every time I see it. It says, Spokane, Washington, wheat fields everywhere, our normal morning loop. Technically, there's not much cycling going on here, but because they're wearing helmets, man, I think it counts. <laughs> Got the helmets on as well. I like that, just, that looks just like a fun bike ride. Yeah, it does. <laughs> in second place, winning the Glass Keepy Cup and a cobbled classic t-shirt is DK75. Here's me in 2013, after reaching 23 stone as of June 2019, here's the new me, weighing in at just under 14 stone. Exercise good, pie's bad. That is awesome, isn't it's it? Really so good. yeah, what a fantastic before and after photo. Yeah. Brilliant, well done, absolutely well done. Um, in first place this week then, we have winning an Epic Climbs Cold Glibier t-shirt, a Core cool Red t-shirt, and a Word Shadow sweatshirt in red and white. That's a big first prize, isn't it? Uh, we've got this one sent in by Alexis B. Up the Col de Valberg. Did you see my accent there? That was yeah, that, good, was, that was really good. Valberg, <laughs> 11 kilometers at 8%, but you're often rewarded with beautiful views of the valley. I just like, that photo just sums up how beautiful alpine roads can I be. Mean, 11, 11 kilometers at 8% doesn't sound beautiful to me. No, no, I take your point, but look at that hair. It, it does look very nice. It yeah. looks amazing. And of course, what goes up must come down. That True. looks like a Descent nice corner good. to rail around, doesn't yeah. it? Absolutely fantastic. Um, as always, we love looking through your inspirational photos, as does everyone else on the app, in fact, um, who can obviously like and comment on them. So do keep uploading them. We're also after your photos of you wearing GCN kit. So uh, so we've got an example actually here for you now. This is Pavel Mili, hot summer ride from Spiska Nova Ves to Spis Castle. So for any lucky GCN viewer who has got their GCN kit already, if you upload a a photo of you wearing it in the GCN app, although under the other category, uh, and then use the hashtag GCN kit. Sounds complicated, but believe me, it's not. Um, then we might, if you're lucky, use a photo of you on our social media, or indeed, if you're really lucky, on the GCN shop as well. So, uh, so yeah, remember that, hashtag GCN kit. Always nice to celebrate new kit day, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is, isn't it? Always like Christmas. But anyway, so there you go. Get stuck in on the GCN app. Before we get on with the rest of the show, a quick reminder of all the amazing racing that we have available on Race Pass on the GCN app. So last week it was Tour of Poland, Tour de Lan, and San Remo. And then this week we've got the Criterium de Dauphiné plus Il Lombardia on Saturday, and even more than that. So do make sure you check it out if you're in the mood for some bike racing. It's now time for cycling shorts. We'll start cycling shorts this week with some news from Zwift. They have just released a whole host of new updates and a much anticipated one, steering. That's right. So steering has been available to test on the short mountain bike segment, very cleverly using the Zwift companion app mounted to your handlebars in order to detect steering input. But now though, it's being rolled out everywhere. By steering, you'll have to navigate your own lines around the corners past other Zwifters, and it'll add a whole other dimension to stip streaming. And just like in real life, you'll have to do it yourself. Yeah, that navigating your own way around corners is probably not going to be good for Hank, is it? But uh, anyway. Can you crash crossed. on Zwift? 
Uh, no, I don't think you can, but he can crash in real life. Oh boy. Um, now then, it, unfortunately, unlike in uh, the trial version, you won't be able to use the companion app. You will need to invest in some additional hardware. And that's because we say that following consultation from that trial period, they decided the companion app wasn't quite precise enough for this job. So first to the market with a usable device is Elite with this, the Sturzo Smart Steering Plate. Amongst other updates, Zwift have unveiled four bots that will act as pace setters that will ride around Watopia almost continuously to set the pace. That's right, and you can basically join them whenever you feel like it. What did make me chuckle is that the slowest bot, would you believe, is called Dan. What so, a coincidence. Yeah, so Diesel Dan will trundle around Watopia at just one watt per kilo, which, which just seems uncannily like real life, doesn't it? Zwift haven't said where they've got their inspiration from, but, uh, but we all know. Happy birthday to you. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Sticking with hot tech for a minute, Wahoo have just launched their new legendary indoor kicker trainer. Ollie has been busy unboxing this one, and as always, we'll be giving one away. So head over to the GCN Tech channel to check that out. Indeed, yeah. Now, just like the Zwift updates, there has been an awful lot going on to what would you believe is now version five of the kicker. Perhaps the biggest one is the addition of what they're calling kicker axis motion feet. So they add in five degrees of lateral movement to free the bike up underneath you so that it feels a little bit more like riding outside, basically. Plus, the power meter is accurate to just plus or minus one per Percent and it auto calibrates and it's being sold at the same price as the previous version. Those axis motion feet are available on the existing kicker if you fancy that. That's right. Added extra, be quite cool, wouldn't it? Now, away from the virtual world to the real world, and Canada has become the latest country to include cycling as part of its emergency COVID-19 infrastructure response. The government have committed $3.3 billion, and apparently active transport is high on the agenda. So if there could be any kind of positive legacy from COVID-19, let it be bikes. Great news. Now, a different kind of race was taking place here in the UK last week, GB Giro, and it was made famous by EF's Lachlan Morton. It was run under COVID restricted rules and it took place last week. Yeah, so riders had to be completely self-sufficient for the 2,000 kilometer trip from Land's End to John O'Groat, including having to take all of the food that they would need for that journey with them. And it was a journey that was both on and off-road, included 30,000 meters of climbing. Our first rider home was actually our mate, Josh Ibbert, who, uh, here he is, look, enjoying the view at John O'Groat's. Looks absolutely delightful, doesn't it? Now, he had provisioned for 7,000 calories per day for eight days, but fortunately, my fear of him having to buy an emergency can of Coke and a Mars bar 40 kilometers from John O'Groat's and therefore getting disqualified went unfounded. And in fact, here he is showing us in a video from the final day that he even had food to spare. Doesn't it look delightful? Lastly, the Canyon Z CCE racing team are looking for some new young talent. They are looking for riders, male and female, between 16 and 23 for their development racing squad. Yeah, so successful applicants will receive a essential support package from Canyon and also the other team sponsors, but they'll also get mentorship and guidance from some of the senior and successful members on the team. So if you fancy checking that out and getting an application in, you will find it on the canyonzcc.com website. So make sure you head over and check that one out. Next up, we've got some competition results and it's a big one. We asked you to upload your favorite ride to Commute for a chance to win a 3T Explorer. That's right. So are you ready? We've got the winners right here. Now we had stacks of entries from all I've, over the world. I put my entry in too. Yeah, we, uh, we disallowed that one, unfortunately. Um, sorry, just, you know, okay. as it is, yeah. Um, you might be able to like apply for the ZCC racing team if you fancy it. But, yeah, I've um, got a few more months left. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Uh, <laughs> so right, I, I, I don't, unfortunately, have no? any months left, no. Um, Dan's got even fewer, so that's fine. Uh, right, anyway, you're waiting patiently for some results. Okay, so in third place, it's Matti Lukic from Zurich in Switzerland. And actually, brilliantly, he said his favorite ride was his, com his commute, his commute, and it looked utterly beautiful. Uh, in second place is John Shackleton from Seoul in South Korea. And then in first place, we waiting, winner of the 3T Explorer is Josh B from Melbourne, Australia. 
it just looks like a fantastic ride and uh, well, we all wanted to go and do it, didn't we, basically? Um, and now, if you want to check out any of the applications, then they're all over on the GCN Komoot page. So uh, if nothing else, you will get plenty of inspiration for your own rides, I would imagine. It's time now for hack forward slash bodge. That was a that was a good one. Bodge of the week. That part of the show where we pick out some of our favourite hacks or possibly bodges from the GCN app and uh, share them with you now. Man, on who are we going through first? First up, we've got this one in from Richard Lean. Excuse Careful. me. That's a bodge, obviously. Watch the screen. And he says, my wife and I live in a small combo in Vancouver. She has two bikes and I have one. Floor space is a premium. We needed a solution to store bikes. As pictured, we use the hanger wall mounts to hang our bikes from the wall in our living room. I think they look pretty cool. They do. I'm particularly liking neat, the way they neat. painted the backdrop as yeah, well nice. to set it off. Uh, I believe uh, bike racing themed. Um, oh, that was a hack for me. Yeah, it was very neat. I yeah. like that, yeah. Hack, right. And then 90% of you said it was a hack as well. So uh, pretty unanimous there. Uh, we've got another bike storage facility. Uh, this one sent in from Diderik96. Um, now, this is genius, really. He said, uh, when moving into my new apartment, I wanted to hang my bike on the wall as I had a wall mount. However, by chance, when trying to see if my bike can be mounted up high, I placed it in front of the beams and it just stayed there. So, uh, so basically resting on his saddle uh, and also a pedal there. So uh, I, think that's, I think that's genius, really. I'd be a little bit worried. Honestly. I'm a bit worried, yeah. But um, I feel like it's quite high to fall from as well. Yeah, I mean, it would do an awful lot of damage if your bike fell off from there. But uh, I suppose one takes that risk if you're going to hang it from a wall. Yeah, slash I guess. So, um, what are you going for, hack or bodge? I'm saying bodge. I are don't you? know if it's worth, worth the risk hanging it that high. Well, yeah. I mean, to be fair, my first reaction was a bodge as well, because he's not really done anything. But then 84% of people have said hack, so... Um, so maybe. Each their own. Yeah. Let us know how secure it is up there and uh, if a small gust of wind is likely to blow it off, in which case <laughs> we will uh, we will make our final decision. Uh, right then, who's next? Next D up, we've got Dave C. And gear cable failed. My friend's gear cable snapped the evening before the three of us went on a ride. I'm, I'm not sure what, what has that he little done? clip there is. He's bodged it with something. Oh, that's one of those little electrical things, you know, where you've got like, <clears throat> it's my electrical knowledge coming in. Things. <laughs> so it's like a, you put a wire in each end and then you clamp them down with a little screw, which I've never seen done uh, in a bike situation before. Now, I mean, I technically wouldn't have one of those electrical couplers knocking around the house, but I do have a spare cable. But still, that to my mind, if, if it worked, it's it, a Yeah, hack. if it worked, hack. Yeah. If it didn't bodge. No, I mean, yeah, it does. It is definitely a bodged fix, isn't it? Yeah. But, um, anyway, 47% of you say hack, and then 53% of you say bodge. And we're definitely on the fence, aren't we? Okay. Right then, next up, we have this one from Some Kind of Steve, which, uh, which is one of the classic uh, making an old bike into an e-bike. Although, is that an e-bike? Because it looks a bit like a petrol motor. That's, that's definitely uh, a motorbike. That's a motorbike, yeah. yeah. We, we have on seen steroids. We have, we have seen a few of these, and um, yeah, I'd definitely say that's a that's a bodge yeah. to my mind. Not the prettiest looking thing, is it? No. Is that your bike, Steve? And if so, are you still alive? <laughs> Let us know. Uh, okay, we got another one. Another one in from Winning Singles, and is it a bodge if it works? A family trip to the Ardennes in Belgium forgot my Wahoo head unit. Attached my phone to the bike with some elastic bands, and it worked a charm. That's a bodge. I mean, I'm sorry, but if you attach your phone to your bike with elastic bands, that's a bodge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if it works, that's still a bodge. Um, but fair play to you. You know, that is getting you out of a sticky situation. But um, mm. I mean, it looks quite aerodynamic there as well, doesn't it? Yeah. If it falls, that's R.I.P. phone. It is, yeah. Cracks. Have you ever had that? that screen? Not as in having attaching your phone to your handlebars with an elastic band, but dropping your phone whilst you're out. No, I've never oh, dropped my phone on. I that. had it once. It fell out of my jersey pocket, right? So this was many years ago, and I went into it. I went into an aero tuck. Yeah, probably. Yeah, let's not go. There. <laughs> I went into an aero tuck as you do, and I just heard this like clink clink, and then it hit an oncoming car. Oh no! As well. Long anyway, gone. the car didn't stop. But I don't know why. It must have done some serious damage. Anyway, the phone was just annihilated. 
So anyway, let that be a lesson to you. Make sure it fits well in your jersey pocket and probably don't attach it to your bike with elastic bands. Learn from size mistakes. Yeah, even though Wynn and What's His Face actually didn't drop his phone. No. So, anyway, we digress. Is there one more hack or podge? Yes, I believe there is. Um, ah, pissed with old me and Dan. Uh, Andrew 2, uh, dodgy Wi-Fi and watching one of your shows. Isn't funny when the Wi-Fi goes on the blink and the stream freezes that people always look like they had a couple of mineral waters. Mineral waters, mineral waters, mineral waters myself. I'm not sure what the others have been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does actually look, look a bit like a pub conversation uh, late into the night, doesn't it? That's what, I bet that's what Dan looks like tonight on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> ah, brilliant. Yeah, it lately is as well. Ah, anyway, um, oh, only 6% uh, of people said bodge as well, which I guess is referring to Dan's expression there. Uh, right, that is all for Hack and Bodge for this week. Um, as we said, just upload them to the GCN app. We love going through them. So do you as well, voting for them on your hundreds and thousands. So, uh, so yeah, keep them coming in and we will pick out the best each week. It's caption competition time now, that part of the show where you get a chance to win a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you gotta do, all you gotta do, I say it like it's simple, you have gotta write an incredibly witty caption to a photo that we're about to give you. The best one will get picked out next week. Manon, you have, I believe, the winner from last week. I do, and it is Sam Huddleston with the caption, come on Edvald, I'll help you get Reese started. Yes. Cracking pun there, love it. Bjarna Reese giving him a push, Reese started. Yeah, yeah, genius. You old enough to remember Bjarna Reese, man? No. no. <laughs> oh, good lord. I'll, I'll right. pretend. Anyway, never mind. Let's give you a photo for this week. Uh, we have Primoz Roglic and Egan Bernal on the podium of Tour de Lan. Um, in Lloyd's absence, I will uh, I'll try and do the caption justice. <clears throat> Primoz trying desperately to keep Bernal at arm's reach. See what they're trying to do on the, like, no? Okay, <clears throat> we'll see if you can do better. Just put your caption in the comment section down below. Wow. Now before we take a look at what's coming up on the channel this week, let's take a look at our favorite comments from the week. The first one is on Hank's dad, Hank versus his dad video. And Great video, I have to say. Yes, yes. Is in from Matthew. Hank's dad is clearly, clearly wearing illegal socks. It's a good point there, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and to be fair, I mean, the UCI have never regulated, but I would imagine boat shoes are probably on the banned list as well. Yeah. So. And the last one on that video is in from K1 N Loch. Petition to get Hank's dad in the GCN gear and become a presenter. <laughs> I reckon he'd be good presenting here. Well, I think yeah. he would, yeah. Natural? He was. He was very, very watch, wasn't he? He was absolutely brilliant. I'm not sure what he'd say to actual GCN clothing. I reckon we'd get him in it. You reckon? Yeah. You reckon he'd, well, yeah, okay, let's go for it then. Um, <laughs> yeah, if, if he, if, like, give us a thumbs up in uh, underneath and we'll, um, yeah, we'll see if we can get Hank's dad in, uh, in some <laughs> Castelli Aero shorts and an Aero jersey. Oh, we should uh, probably tell him, tell him about this before. Well, this video goes out. No, it'll be all right. I think, he's, I think he's up for a laugh, isn't he? Under 10 ways that you know you're a cyclist, uh, Capane Jr. said, you know you're a cyclist when your YouTube recommendation is filled with GCN videos. Ah, oh, doesn't that warm the heart? I like that. That's fantastic. Coming up on Wednesday, we have how to make riding more comfortable as a woman. On Thursday, we have size of favorite roads from around the world. On Friday, we have Jeremy's second part to his Ketos 100 mile ride. Yeah, so, so Jeremy in ketosis, poor guy, is going to do a 100 mile ride to see what it's like to do it completely bonked, which is uh, well, it's Sounds delightful. Horrible. Rather him than me. Uh, on Saturday, I get to ride the new Merida Reacto aero bike, which I'm super looking forward to. Uh, and then on Sunday, well, this is one of yours, isn't it? Manon? I'm very excited about Manon's this one. Manon's Cheap Bike Challenge. So uh, I cannot wait to see this. And um, well, here's a little sneak peek. Oh, wrong way. Oh. oh gosh, I have not got an FBA to this plan. So that's 
it for the GCN show this week. Thanks for having me. You have to replace Dan. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Um, Oh, happy birthday again, Dan. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, before you go, though, uh, just a couple of quick ones. There is so much pro racing on this week. I barely know where to start. Um, we've got two awesome Italian one days, including Lombardy. Uh, and we've also got the Criterium de Dauphiné going on as well. And uh, they're all available on Race Pass, although do check uh, that it's available in the country in which you live. Uh, and then also, final point of business, um, I'm told that uh, the new Castelli kit is back in stock in the shop. So uh, if you're waiting for that, do make sure you head over and check it out. Whew, there we go. Cheers, my mom. Thanks. See you later. Bye.